Hi, Merlin. So what should we talk about now? Hi, she. So good to see you again. Yeah, you know, there's just so many things percolating in these in our teaching these days. There's just so many layers that we can really have fun attending to. And um, I think the idea of, you know, embedding story in the pieces and stories that resonate with a student um, might be might be a, a really fun place for us to just do some exploring for the next while. Yeah, so for the people who don't know us, I'm Shui Scott. I'm a cello teacher in living in Austin, Texas, and this is Merlin. Hi, I'm Merlin. Thompson. I'm a piano teacher. I live in Calgary, Alberta, and uh, we love talking about music teaching, I would say. We love. Nobody can stop us, that's for sure. Once in a while, you will mention about uh, putting, giving students ideas, putting their imagination in their in their practice and in our lessons as a really useful tool for helping them find their ownership in this whole learning situation. Um, and I was just thinking about uh, one of my four-year-old students who was having a hard time having a quality review and. Recently, she came back with her mom so happily because she learned to play her review songs on different string with that has different character representing the each each song. And then for each character, they travel to France when she played the French folk song and they play lightly row when they're rowing a boat. And then uh, then they go to a windy place and that's when she plays the song of the wind um, and it became such a beautiful theatrical project um, for her review so i was so excited to to see both of them feeling passionate about it that's the one thing that triggered me to think wow storytelling is important but i think a lot of teachers feel shy from this because it's easy to say I'm not creative. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I my impression is that uh, we all have, can I say this as a general statement? We all have the desire to tell stories. And, you know, when kids are little, they're always being told stories or being read stories, you know, fairy tales and so on. And there is a certain point where they do want to be the one who is telling the story, like, give me the book. I'm going to be the one that reads it and tell it. But I also see how, how children um, have the desire to tell their own stories mm -hmm. and to, tell their, to, to, you know, to share their own version of what happens when the bad guy shows up and the good guy shows up. To, they, they have their own versions of all of those things. Right. Um, and it's just very easy for, for us to, for, for us to, easy, uh, easy for us to, to forget when we teach, we are the artists and when we are making art together, there should always be space for this remaking, remaking phrase, remaking music, uh, with a new idea. That, that got me thinking about La San Quentin as a, a big party and in the middle of it is when during the party the, the rubato part, pum, 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 descending part, I would add, refer to the laughter, beautiful laughter coming from the, the guests in the, you know, in the celebration and that always helped them to think in the theatrical in, in that um, idea and they would start to think about, oh yeah, how do I use my bow? How can I make that part slower and this part speed up? Things like that. Yeah, I was wondering so how you to do that. Well, what you're talking, I think what I hear and what I, what I, yeah, what I hear is that, you know, there's a certain amount of um, students invest in their story. And they know what a good story is 
and what it just a rate you know don't that's not really a story that's just that's just something that happened that's not a story so it's a, a good story has a certain amount of um intrigue to it uh, a, a good story you're drawn into the story there's something that you, you want to know more about these characters i mean what's going on over there in the base why should i pay any attention to that well yeah you have to give the character something that was going to make us interested in that person so i find the idea of stories really interesting because of this idea that we invest ourselves in um the depth of the story for sure yeah i like the word invest because that that means the uh, the the participant of their of a person's mind and uh imagination and many many things when when you have imagination that's always um to me when i teach and i know that the student is putting his or her imagination in in the in this whole the the, the song we're learning um that's always so fun when they want to yeah you know this part you can make it sound like this and how about this and so all the techniques now mean something to them how do you do that with uh you know for articulation for for piano yeah well everything you know can be part of our voice and how we use our voice to tell stories uh, and that's always really interesting I remember reading a story for my sister. My sister's seven years younger than I. Mm -hmm. So um, we had a, 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 a practice of reading her a bedtime story. And it was taken by my mom or my dad or myself or my two brothers. And I remember reading her a story once. And um, I was reading along and she kind of poked me and went, how the story goes. And uh -huh. what she was referring to was that the tone of voice that I was using to read the story wasn't the tone of voice my mom and my dad used. And she interpreted that my mom and dad, the way they told the story, was actually the story. For me, the story was the words. And yeah. so it's really interesting, you know, just, just oh, what is in a story. a story. A story isn't just the words. A story is what we do with the story. And if we're telling the story out loud, we're using our voice. If we're telling a story at the piano, we're using the sound to tell that story as well. Right. So, what would you if if this were stu if I am a student here, I'm your student, and I and I uh, I complain about I don't know how to put the storytelling in my twinkle. Then, uh, would you play a twinkle with no storytelling imagination, <laughs> and then play another one with storytelling imagination? So there is demonstration. I can demonstrate. The danger with demonstration is that then that it, they become fixed. So that becomes, oh, that's that version and that's that version. Can the student do either one of those versions? Maybe they feel that they can or can't. So I prefer I prefer to approach the pieces with a more abstract approach. And I love doing things like play me the laughing version. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, so before we get to a full out story, mm -hmm, let's play me the laughing version. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This laughing mm -hmm. involves my whole body. Okay. Well, so maybe I can play a laughing version of Twinkle before I teach them the laughing laughter in La Sanquantaine. Then they can do dun 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 dun, dun and, and just f so first you set them free. Yes. Yeah, first find something that they can do that's only involves one task. So for me, laughing is a great one. Or even the difference between dark and light. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can, you, can you show me, I'm really curious to hear, I'm curious to hear what your dark sound will sound like. I know what my dark sound sounds like. I don't need to hear you imitate my dark sound. I wanna know what the word dark brings out when you use your own imagination to it. What does a light sound sound like? So I know what my light sound sounds like, but that's my light sound isn't the uh, benchmark of light sounds. My light sound is just my light sound. Right, right. I, I have experienced um, 
when after after having a story telling a discussion with the students setting setting the the uh, theater stage setting the stage uh, at for a certain plot right and and then even though I I'm just re remembering this this um, six year old playing um, you know like what was she playing? I think she was playing six. She was playing like the um, long, long ago variation. Da -dum -bum -bum -ba -dum -bum. We were talking about uh, picking mushrooms or picking uh, fruits and picking uh, blueberries, you know, in, in Texas. Um, so um, sometimes the rendering is not satisfying. You know, because she's trying to put the new thing into her playing. But I see the focus level is totally different. Yeah. And I had to remind myself, don't talk, don't say it doesn't sound that good. You know, don't talk, don't say that that G is too flat. Because, <laughs> because this moment with her focus, that's the most beautiful yeah. um, outcome of that process of thinking it through together and the music will the rendering part will take time will get better but at this moment the beautiful part is that she's so focused let's not talk yeah yeah so what you're talking about is the investment of this mm -hmm. commitment to that particular thing is really intense mm -hmm. and allowing that intensity and involvement to take place and to get comfortable with it before you introduce the next thing, which might be like intonation or something like that, or holding the, the note long enough, if it's a dotted quarter note and not a, you know, two dotted quarter note. So those kinds of things, yeah, just allowing the student to develop fluency, I guess, is what it is. Fluency, mastery of things one at a time rather than expecting that, oh, because we're mastering this one thing that all these other things then should automatically fall in place with it as well. Right, right, right. The, I remember the our fun discussion about mastery and that was that was really, it, that was very helpful for me as a teacher to think about what's my priority list. We can't always ask for a perfect rendering at every moment at every stage of 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 le learning right um but which part which layer do we want to make sure that they have mastered and you know the the love for the music or or um this finger not putting on the keyboard right i don't know <laughs> and i think part, part of that for me is why <laughs> i i really teach a cycle of things you know so it's not just every week I focus on the beat uh, or every week I focus on tone. It's like one week I'm focusing on the beat, the next week, so it's very concrete. The next week I'm focusing on imagination, completely not concrete. The next week I'm focusing on tone production, so concrete and abstract. Well, the next week I'm focusing on uh, composer's needs. The week after, well, I'm back to my first thing. Mm -hmm. And so I'm always going through this cycle, knowing that, if I pay attention to any one of those things, mm -hmm. the others will be impacted as well. Interesting. But if I only pay attention to one of them, I, I run the risk of students becoming so annoyed with me that, you know, it's like they show up, oh yeah, he's going to talk about beat again this week. Oh yeah, he's going to talk about beat again this week. Yeah, he's going to, is he ever going to move on to anything else? Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm moving on, but within this cycle all the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. I remember uh, the very early um, music training, uh, in my experience, I had uh, some Doc Rose learning with um, this professor, Marta Sanchez, uh, she passed away a while ago. And she mentioned the word spiral, the spiral approach going through all this music elements, similar to what you said, a, a circle cycle. Um, and that really helped me to, to it really free, freed up my perception about teaching you know it's not just the one same framework every for every week or every every uh period period of of learning um and then and then it goes 
to your uh, the different layers and and different areas that um, the that teachers need to be aware of. Um, it, they all they are all really great resources. Yeah. And that's that's why now I feel storytelling is really good. It's important. It's not just you know once a year thing. <laughs> The other example about storytelling, some of my older students, I encourage them to draw a story, uh, uh, draw maybe uh, like a four, four square of the uh, cartoon or um, I think it was Marcello and Vivaldi's slow movement uh, sonata, um, just so that they, f they, they will feel every phrase has, has a, has a, there's a, story it goes to the next thing um that helped especially the teenagers that seem to help them to to enjoy the process more do you do anything like that um i have three things i pay a lot of attention to um core breath and energy are my three biggies mm -hmm. um, they really i hang on to those a lot um, because they are really my jumping off points to just about anything. So core breath energy, I can, we can talk about, let's play this piece with the story of gratitude. Let's play this piece with the story of um, happiness or joy. Let's play this piece with the story of, what are some of the other ones I have uh, that come quickly to mind? with all the colors that you can think of. Mm -hmm. So so in certain cases, you know, I'm truly really trying to pay attention to what the piece may be intending, but, but I'm also aware that um, the pieces for me are all vehicles for exploring what the student has to say about anything. You know, we, let's explore the piece with anger and just see what happens with that. Mm -hmm. um, but, be so you know squeaky clean about our interpretation of pieces that we never go to any place that's dangerous mm, yeah um, occasion i have students play opposites for me and some of the best playing that i've heard in my entire life uh has been the opposite of what the culture intended uh i have students he played it was this little arabesque for a number of months and the piece ends with this huge crashing chord at the very end and he was the most adept at playing <laughs> the softest thing and it absolutely stirred my heart every time i heard it one day he did it one day and i said you know i can't tell you how much respect i have for you at this very moment because I was moved deeply by what he contributed to this piece. Mm. Such a such a deep um, conversation and your comment about that. That's that's when a student is is that means he's invested his his thoughts and um, on on that place. Um, I'm not thinking at that profound level, uh, but the example I have is, you know, for cello, a lot of time when we first teach long, long ago, it's the first, uh, in book one is the first song that's long, long bow challenging. And uh, I remember one time I was just so frustrated that no, none of my group class students uh, pay attention to the long bow and leg legato bow. So I just said, let's just play a short, short ago. So everybody's like, sure, <laughs> as sure as possible. <laughs> and after they heard it's uh, done, played in the group with such a short bow, they all remember to play long, long ago. <laughs> of opposites. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> and because it really makes the student, again, we're talking about this investment idea. It really makes them invest something and something that they can clearly identify as well. Uh, it's so much fun. Yeah, very nice. Well, I hope that uh, that will give the teachers some new ideas to explore the the way to, to encourage students to tell story in their music. Yeah, and I think, you know, to think long-term as well, 
So, you know, we've talked a lot about things that you can do with beginners and elementary students. Um, but I always want to make sure that, that we get more sophisticated with the ideas that we're bringing to as well. And um, recently I've had a student, she's very, she's very interested in social justice. And so, you know, she's a uh, late junior high, 15 to 16 years old. So there are discussions that are going on at school all the time. Mm -hmm. um, then I'm very curious to know what, the, what those discussions are all about. Mm -hmm. And how those kinds of things even show up, um, not necessarily uh, embedded in the pieces, but to how does our knowledge, for example, of social justice influence the way we might play a piece? Mm. Can you give us an example why, uh, or part of your discussion? Yeah, well, this particular discussion was on education. And this student had noticed, she has friends who play the piano as well. And she noticed that there are, are certain approaches to teaching piano uh, that are very personality based. And then there are various approaches that are not personality based, where it's kind of like, mm, don't get your, let your personality come in here because the piece is what should, we should be focusing on. Mm -hmm. So when she told me about this, you know, I couldn't help but uh, just to explain to her that historically, uh, education has really been dominated by what we call curriculum or content-based instruction. And it's only very recently that the personality of the student um, kind of was allowed to have room to, to flourish in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, like the, the speaker, the t uh, TED Talk speaker that you, you like and I like too, uh, Ken Sir Robbins, did I Ken say? Robinson. Yeah, yeah, Ken Robinson. Um, he from his first TED talk, talk was the first time I start thinking heavily about this. You know, the person centered on the learner, the learner centered uh, learning, and um, all the ways to to make learning um, creative, but um, profound and it's not just one way learning. It's not just top down learning. And I think storytelling is a really good tool to, to, to bring that, uh, bring, bring the student and the teacher more on a, a common play on the, the, uh, equal play. Yeah. I would say that what we're really trying to do is to empower students to care about what they're doing. So, you know, I like to point out that music can't take care of itself. Uh, music doesn't have, uh, you know, a board that's over here going, oh, music, you need to be, you know, da, da, da. There's, not, there's nothing there. Music depends on us to, mm -hmm. to care for it. And we can care for music by, by telling stories with it. Mm -hmm. uh, some of those stories may involve, you know, things that we don't want to hear about, like anger and upset and frustration and all those kinds of things. So um, I think what, I, what I'm trying to say is that caring about music, for me, takes it to this level where it's not just I'm playing the piece, but mm, I'm taking care of this thing. Uh, that partially belongs to me and partially I'm going to share with everybody else around me as well. Right. You're just telling the story. You're the, you're in, you're the interpreter. You read the music or you learn the melody, but inter you interpret it to, to the listener. And I think it, if uh, as early as students can, uh, can learn that, that level of, of um, awareness, then it, it helps them to, I think it helps them to feel that practice become more interesting because it's not just them repeating the music. It's they start to think they are telling the musical story and how are they going to tell it? It's upon them. Right. Yeah. Very nice. Because that's, um, you know, like you were talking about the, the, the big history about education and it can be, it can be, um, put into this storytelling in a private lesson setting. Um, that's just really, that's really interesting. 
Yeah, and the challenge is always that we only have so much time. <laughs> you know, you know, and people, you know, to tell a story can take five minutes out of your lesson time. So should I spend that five minutes on intonation and hand position and keeping the beat or you know what am i gonna do so it's always this thing about how do we keep this spiral going i guess without getting locked into any one place for too long right during that whole time i can see that what you're saying i can see teachers feeling uh concerned or worried that they don't have enough time to fit to fit the storytelling in, but I, I always say that every time in our discussions, whenever we um, whenever we successfully invite a student to invest their mind, invest their imagination, invest their um, their thinking, it's always the shortcut. It's always the way to save time. I think. <laughs> So where did we get to today with this topic? What were our big points? Uh, storytelling is fun. Storytelling is fun. Takes a little time to practice, maybe, if the, parent, if the teachers are not used to this way of teaching. Um, but I think we both agree it's rewarding and it can go a lot deeper and touch and touch a, a lot more area of the, the, the whole scope of learning. Opposites in imagination can be a good place to start, um, but I'll point towards the at the end as well that getting more and more sophisticated um, and more relevant to the student's actual present day life, I think, is an important thing to consider as well. Yeah, the more it's becoming more personal, the more the more willing they will in, invest themselves in. I think. Very nice. Great job. <laughs>